What's up, everybody? Doc Dog 185. There's levels to this. All right, guys, check this out, man. Just want to have a real quick conversation with you about this. I just had a podcast with my boy, High Some Motion Gaming. Shout out to you, my dude, the Water Warrior Podcast. We had a lot of fun. It's been a minute since uh, since I was able to live stream or do a podcast or anything like that. So appreciate you being patient with me, my dude. But we had fun. It's about two hours long. Go check it out. I was on his channel, High Some Motion Gaming, um, the Water Warrior Podcast. But anyways, while we were on that podcast... There's specific topics that we always say um, that we're going to talk about. We never rehearse it or anything like that because we try to have the conversations live so you guys could get the or, the organic feel of the conversation. And um, we spoke about Fortnite, no building mode. We spoke about uh, portable gaming. And then we spoke about the new PlayStation Plus tier and stuff, right? Because me and him haven't had a chance to talk about it. During the podcast, me and ISO had this argument. We were arguing whether or not the Steam Deck was competing with uh, the Nintendo Switch. And people in the chat and in the comment section jumped in and everything. I understand when people try to say this is not competing with that. It's not in the same. They're not going after the same demographic and all this other stuff. Okay. I I get it. I'd be lying to you if I said I didn't get it. But in the grand scheme of things, they're all competing. So for you to believe that the Steam Deck is not trying to compete with the mobile market makes no sense. Because it is literally a handheld gaming device. A Switch is a handheld gaming device. It is definitely competing. Now, me and argue, me and ISO had that argument. And if you, you want to watch the resolution of it, go ahead and watch the podcast because we resolved it. And we agreed on both ser- on two separate points after we articulated what we had to articulate. This video, however, is for those of you out there that want to believe the narrative That PlayStation Plus Premium is not trying to compete against Game Pass Ultimate. There's a difference. As it stands right now, there is no competition. And what I mean by that, see, I'm going to explain what I mean by that, is I mean that uh, Game Pass Ultimate is so far ahead right now with what they they offer value-wise. That it's not even a competition. You guys heard that phrase, right? It's not even a competition. But trust me, trust me, they are trying to compete with Game Pass Ultimate. Here's the thing that I give credit to Sony, and you ha- you have to give credit where credit's due, okay? Sony knows its identity. They are self-aware of who they are. When everybody said um, that this PlayStation Spartacus thing, when it was called Spartacus, people were already saying that all this was going to be was a rebranding of PlayStation Plus and PS Now. Well, <laughs> PlayStation Premium is literally exactly that. What I was telling ISO was, because we went through all the tiers and everything, That second tier, the extra tier, is 400 games that is a combination of PS4 and PS5 games, right? And then for that third tier, they say an additional 350 games, right? So that's 750 games, right? But the additional 350 games now includes PS1, PS2, PSP, and PS3 via cloud. Now you can stream all of them and you can it from what it sounds like is you can download all of them except for the PS3 games and it equals up a total of over 700 games. It's like 750 games. What I told ISO was cuz ISO didn't know this. 
PlayStation Now, like right now today, currently has somewhere about 800 games in it. How do I know? I subscribe to PlayStation Now. <gasps> yes, the Xbox guy, the Game Pass guy subscribes to PlayStation Now. I subscribe to PlayStation Now, or I'm still subscribed to PlayStation Now, not really by choice. See, when I got PlayStation Now, I looked at the different prices that it had, and I saw that the year subscription would be cheaper. So I went ahead and I subscribed for a year. The reality is, though, that somewhere along probably my subscription ends in May. I think it was probably in December when I told ISO, like, yo, I'm not going to renew my PlayStation Now subscription. But there's nothing I could do because I already signed up for the year. So Sony's continually going to, you know, get that money or whatever, which it's okay. I made the choice. I made that decision. Okay. Sony knows who they are, though, like I said. So by them just rebranding this and repackaging this so that you only got to pay one subscription fee. Right. Versus paying two separate ones like I'm doing right now. It might make it seem easier for you to go ahead and jump on board. It's still relatively the same price as if you had PS Now and PS uh, Plus together for a year. Because was 60 and 60. Right. 120. I believe that's what the top tier is anyways. 120. So. It's literally the same thing. And I can't be mad at Sony for that. From the business perspective, that's what they're going to do. From the gamer perspective, though, I have a choice. And the same way you would choose, right, what you deem to be the better quality game to actually buy, I'm going to choose the better quality gaming service to be part of. And then, like I said, it is a competition, but it's not even a competition. But this is where where it's going to get interesting. See, money talks. I believe because this has Sony's name attached to it, it's going to somewhat succeed. I believe that a lot of people that were all about... I like to own my games and I like to buy my games are going to feel justified in getting this subscription service because they know that day and dates aren't going to be there, at least not now. So they'll still be able to buy their their games and still feel good about buying their games and saying that they just got this service every once in a while to play these old games when they have that itch. And because it's just going to be bundled up as one purchase, I don't know why, even though it doesn't, even though it shouldn't, I think this is going to do very well. What if, what, what gives me fear is this. If this does too well, Microsoft might look at what Sony is doing and A, be like, why are we doing this much when they're doing a lot less and still getting the same number of subscribers or B say, Hey, we're doing way more than they're doing. And our prices are somewhat equivalent. Let's bump up our prices. So whatever decision the Sony fans make, I really hope, I really hope they stick to everything that they've been saying for the past two years since I've been in this gaming community heavily and that's that they don't like subscription services and that's that they don't play old games i really hope they stick to that because if they do then this playstation premium shouldn't be as popular as for whatever reason i think it's going to be and if it's not then one of two things are going to happen either sony will put day and date or they'll have to drop the price it'll be either or Either they'll put the end date or they'll have to drop the price. I'm going to go with whatever subscription service gives me the most value. 
whether it is Xbox or PlayStation. It's just the last, this generation so far, Xbox has been the better choice to game. Don't get upset. Don't get emotional. Just, just, just relax. Okay. These, these are facts. This is not an opinion. Okay. The best place to play is Xbox this generation. And I don't mean Xbox, just the console. I'm talking about Xbox, the ecosystem. If you're someone that likes to play old games, Xbox, for sure. If you're someone that definitely likes value, Xbox, for sure. If you like a few exclusives, because you guys like to act like there's a thousand exclusives out there. If you like a few exclusives, then go ahead, get yourself a PlayStation. But understand that PlayStation sees the competition that is Game Pass. And they're trying to compete with it. It's just that right now, they're doing the bare minimum, hoping that people like you fall for their BS and actually subscribe. Doc Dog 1985, there's levels to this. Don't let them pimp you on this, man. They already got you blowing on controllers. This is getting ridiculous now. Charging you for haptic feedback. This is crazy. We out. Peace.